the man himself is either excited to come on or in a hurry to get off the line with us. So we introduce and welcome on Kevin Adams, new GM of the Buffalo Sabres. Razor, if you could just mute your mic so we don't have to hear you licking the envelope. What did I do? You're licking the envelope. We're 10 seconds in and you're all over me. Seriously. It, it's it's a daily thing when you come on the show. Kevin Adams, good morning. I get bored with you guys. Good you guys morning. Entertained. Hi, Kevin. Who, who do I get the pleasure of talking to? I got Razor. I got Petey. Is Ribs on, too? Yeah. Oh, don't man. Expect, Ribs don't is expect, here. Don't expect him to say oh. anything. I'll just give you a warning, <laughs> Kevin. Do not ruffle any papers or move anything while you're doing this, or Petey will be all over you. Got it. We're okay. Just, we're noted. We're, Thank you. We're just trying to be professionals around here. Hey, uh, we don't have to change the formality of our conversations, do we? Who are you talking to, me? Yeah, you. What are you talking about? This is a, this is fun to talk to you guys. We get to get on. We get to you get to tell me that I wasn't that good of a player and you used to beat me up and all that stuff. So yeah. Well, let's, let's, listen. Let's hey, uh, congratulations. Kevin on uh, on the news yesterday and I, I guess you know number one we heard you on with uh, with Howard this morning we appreciate you coming on with us but to start with I mean you, you get you get hired yesterday the news comes out and then you you know you have to lead off with what probably will be one of your harder days that you've had to have as general manager yeah it was a uh... It was a wide range of emotion yesterday, and I'll you know walk you through it a little bit. Obviously, you guys know um, me pretty well. You know my background. Um, this opportunity that uh, Terry and Kim uh, put in front of me is a dream come true. It's uh, I yeah, I mean I grew up going to the Memorial Auditorium, sitting up in the oranges with my dad. I I used to take the subway in high school, um, watch Razor play and scalp tickets, and you know so it's it's in my blood and. Um, so as you can imagine, um, the thrill for me and my family is truly, truly incredible. Um, you know, quickly turned the page after the announcement to what the next few hours looked like. And, you know, and you guys know in this business, you've been around a long time. Um, it, it had to make some hard phone calls. And, um, but I wanted to make sure I started off my position the right way, being honest, being just upfront with people, um, explaining um, just kind of the reset and, you know, where we were going from here. So um, that's just the way I want to handle things. I want to be honest. I want to be up front. Um, and I think I've been there, you know, as a player. I got traded a number of times. I was sent to the minors. I've been, I've been cut. I was fired as an assistant coach. I've been in those positions where you're on the receiving end of tough news. Um, so I get it. The human element is, is real, and you have to treat people with respect. So um, certainly a range of emotions. A lot of work in front of us, but, uh, you know, excited to really be starting here. How many resumes did you receive yesterday? <laughs> uh, let's just say uh, there's, a, there's a few hundred sitting in the inbox right now, which is, <laughs> which is, a, which is a great sign, um, to be quite honest with you. I, I'm a big believer in um, it's about people, right? You surround yourself with great people. You learn from everyone. Um, and you guys know me um, from different roles over the years. Um, I never in a conversation with someone, whether it's, you know, a, an NHL general manager, a coach, um, or a nine-year-old hockey coach, or a dad or mom that I don't try to learn from. You know, so to me, it's about learning. It's about growing. Um, it's about surrounding yourself with good people. So if we start there, um, we lay out the vision to the staff that Terry and Kim have put uh, together, um, we're going to... We're going to move forward and work our work our butt off every day to be successful. Kevin Adams joining the instigators here um, on WGR 550 was named general manager yesterday. Did the introductory uh, Zoom press conference and was on with Howard this morning. Now joins us uh, Rob Ray Omelets as well. Riv Razor, feel free to yeah. jump in. I know we all have questions. I have a uh, I have a comment and a question for for Kev. First off, Kev, uh, congratulations. Um, this is uh, this is a great day uh, for for the Sabers, and you know, obviously uh, had the the opportunity to get to know you in the last number of years, and uh, this is this is a great thing for the organization moving forward. My comment to you is, I was talking about this yesterday with Petey. I was telling him about. The Kevin Adams one-on-one -on -one dangle move that uh, you put on me 
Um, you know, years back when I was playing for the Montreal Canadiens, it's something that I'll never forget because I don't think I've ever been beat that bad one-on-one. And I think you ended up actually scoring the goal too, uh, which made it even worse. Um, do, you, do you recall this at all, Kev? Well, considering if you look up my playoff stats and I had a couple goals in a lot of games, I certainly remember it, Ribs. And, uh, and man, every time I think about the, or we have this conversation, you bring back good memories. So the more I can talk to you guys and you can bring up great moments like that, the positivity, I, 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 I will just keep coming on every day with you. Yeah, I'm all about pumping people's tires. But, uh <laughs> Listen, you know, a lot happened uh, uh, yesterday throughout the organization. Um, obviously, you have a vision for this team moving forwards. There was firings in different departments and uh, whatnot. You know, what are, what are your thoughts? What, uh, what can you tell us about what happened yesterday? Yeah, you know, like, like we touched on a little bit. Um, tough day in terms of those conversations. Um, but, you know, really, guys, this is about philosophically how we're moving forward um, with our efficiency within the staff and our communication. And, and I just really feel it's critical that, you know, our scouting, player development, analytics, our sports performance, you know, these staffs really are in sync and work together. And, and it goes back to people. I mean, we've already touched on it. If you, if you <clears throat> surround yourself with the right people and people that are driven and they all understand we're, we're headed the same direction and we're going to debate, we're going to battle, but we're going to get to the right answer, um, I believe you can be more efficient and you can do more with less. It's not just about how many people you have. It's about utilizing every possible resource you can and then – holding each other accountable. And this is, a, this is going to become more of a flat organization where we truly are in the trenches together. Um, you know, you, like I said, you guys know me. You know my style. This is, I want to sit and talk, and I want to I just get people's honest opinions. I don't want people to change their views or not be comfortable to have a voice. You know, this is, this is something we're going to work together on. There is going to be a lot of communication between Terry, Kim, myself, Coach, um, coaching staff, player development staff, through to Rochester. I mean, these are, these are critical areas of where we're gonna we're gonna move forward. And days like yesterday are tough because change happens when these the roles change sometimes as a new GM comes in. But uh, it's all positivity now and moving forward and putting the work in. Kevin, I have a question about analytics. I know I, I know you are an analytics guy. Oh, Razor, did you want to ask questions? No, no, go analytics? ahead. You ask about analytics. I don't Something want to that... steal your thunder, Razor. Not, You're very quiet. Thunder. It's your show, PD. I'll just it's not when my you get show. I just, I just listen. I I'll ask the question, Kevin. Sorry about that. Uh, analytics. How how when making a decision on players, how, does analytics play? a factor or more of a factor for some players than others. I mean, I guess my question is, can you use analytics to evaluate each and every player? And I, I don't, I don't feel like I'm asking a rhetorical question. I'm, I'm actually, I'm asking cause I, I'm curious to know how analytics are used when making a decision on, on uh, bringing in a player. Yeah, I mean, the, the short answer, Petey, is, is yes, I believe you can and should use analytics um, to help you make decisions. You have to do your homework, you know, more than just saying this is a number and you're going to make a decision because of this. But it's, to me, um, it illuminates the bigger picture. You could, you could see this big picture of a player and all these different areas of what they do, but the analytics over here need to be talked about and need to be explained. And sometimes there's things that are explainable um, really positive or negative. But I, again, I go back to getting the right answer. Get every piece of information you can possibly have from talking to former teammates and coaches and understanding the character, which is certainly not measured in the analytics piece. I mean, you guys know how that is. How is he going to fit in the locker room? What's he going to do after practice and games and put the work in? Is he going to help others get better? Um, is he going to be accepting of his role? You know, if you're signing a player – and you, in your mind, this is a fourth line right winger, and in his mind, he's a second line left winger. You've got a problem because you're not going to fit. And so those are all the parts of things that go into a decision. But the analytics piece is there, and it's real. And I think we're crazy in the world we live in with the amount of information out there not to have that as a part of the equation. And so that's something that 
I'm going to push Jason Nightingale on. Um, we're going to get better. We're going to learn as much as we possibly can. And in the other part, guys, you're going to make mistakes. Like, I think we have to get into a, a situation where um, you own your mistakes. You're honest about it. Um, you guys know my style, whether it's, you know, talking to media or talking to people um, at a restaurant. Just just be honest. Be who you are. If you make a mistake, own it. Move on and get better, you know, and not not to work out of fear, but work out of a positivity within the staff that we're going to build. So that's a long answer, I guess, but that's kind of how the piece of the analytics in my mind works together. Okay, Kev, yeah. yesterday you said that this happened and you got plenty of time here before, you know, you're going to get back at it. But that time is going to go quickly. And you've got a lot of holes to fill. you got a draft. you got free agency. Where Where is – are you setting a priority on all this where we're going to get started? You know, you just can't jump yeah, in and yeah. take a bite out of it all. you got to have a you, priority list yep. here. Where, where Where are we going? Yeah, you're exactly right, Razor. It's a, it's a great point, you know, and I kind of alluded to this with, with Howard this morning. You know, to me, it's, it's timelining this out, right? Like, there, is, there are things that have to get accomplished today, period, have to get done. There's things that are going to have to get accomplished tomorrow, then it's a week, then it's a month, then it's 60 days, 90 days, and you kind of timeline this out. Um, and so you're right. All of this stuff, we have a little bit of a runway. It, because of COVID and everything that's gone on and the world we're living in, there's a lot of unknowns. We don't even have our critical dates calendar. When are certain things going to be happening? Um, but we know they're happening. So how do we prepare for them, um, and how do we utilize this time? You know, time is – if time is wasted, then we're putting ourselves in a bad spot. So, yeah, we have a little bit of luxury of time considering what the normal calendar looks like. But if we don't utilize every second of the time, um, we're putting ourselves at a disadvantage. So, um, Razor, really internally is a big one for me, just starting to understand where our roster is. I want to make sure I get to our players. Um, you know, I had a great talk with Jack yesterday, and we're going to circle back with him and, and grab dinner and start to understand that obviously going to spending a ton of time with Ralph and the coaching staff and understanding where they are with players. Um, there's certainly personnel staffing decisions that we have to, to make. I mean, these are all things that are coming. So if I look internal, um, start there, then we'll, then we'll start to broaden the scope and look on the external. Part. Kev, you know, listening to um, your um, interview with Howard uh, on WGR, this morning there was one comment that really stuck out to me that i that i really really liked and you said um you know when thinking about this team it's about a connectivity with the city connectivity with the city a team um that relates to the city okay and listening to ralph kruger over the last day or so talk about um, the team and how positive and, and all the great things that he loves about his players and the buy-in that they had last year. Um, is there something to you over watching this team over the last number of years? Is there something to you that, that you're going to pinpoint and try and change or some, an area that you want to address? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to put your finger on it, right? Like what exactly is that connectivity with the community and how does it work? Um, what is the magic bullet that our fans love? Come to the, oh, oh, is that razor honking his horn at someone? That's no. exactly razor. That, that is, oh. that is razor. Okay. All right. I'm back. <laughs> I, I think, <laughs> I think the, the connectivity matters to me because, I, and I guess I have a, I would say this, I, I believe I have an advantage um, based on growing up in Buffalo, maybe then people that have come into this role before me, because I, I truly understand that dynamic of the, the love for this team and the community and the passion. And everybody understands you're going to come into arena, you're going to watch a game and you're either going to win or you're lose. But what happened during those two and a half hours? Did the, was there a connection to the fans? Are they, are they enjoying what they're seeing? Is the, is the work being put in? Is there an identity to the team that our fans walk out of the building and say, okay, I feel it. I feel that energy. So those are, it's, it's really hard to like tangibly put your finger on it. But to me, it, it is really important. And I've had some conversations with Ralph about that and he totally agrees. So, I mean, you know, Razor of all people would be the best one to, 
to talk about that. You know, the hardest working team in hockey in his day of, you know, some of the guys that they had and the, the love that the city still has for those players. Now, I understand the game's changed. It's a completely different world now. But there still can be a connectivity in, in the kind of the fabric of how we put this team together with that, that uh, connects with the fabric of the city. Instigators Kevin Adams joining the show here, uh, announced yesterday as the general manager. He was on this morning with Howard. No Jeremy. I'm sure Jeremy actually is probably bummed he missed out on that one. Um, we'll keep him here for a couple more minutes. I don't know if, if Razor or Riv have uh, any more questions for you, Kev. What, so I, I wanted to ask you more about your conversation with Jack. Not necessarily the details of it, but just kind of – how, how how did it go? How, how how was it telling him the news? Um, you know, what's his excitement level like um, for next year and, you know, moving forward? Yeah, so so Terry and I uh, spoke to Jack quickly yesterday morning after um, Terry and Kim had had a conversation with Jason. And, you know, out of respect for Jack as the captain and our, um, you know, our, our guy, you know, Terry wanted to make sure – that he got the Jack right away, which is the right move. And, and Jack was great. You know, I talked to him a little bit about um, the excitement I have and that um, to get to know him and understand, I, I really believe that we need to have players understand our vision from the front office and the organization and that Ralph and I are connected. So when they buy in and they're part of the process, it really can go a long way. So Jack and then, you know, other leadership group sitting with me and Ralph and saying, you know, uh, them telling us, Here's some things I think we need. How can we be better in this area? And then we're saying the same thing going back and forth. There's that open dialogue, open communication. And maybe an advantage I have is that as a player, I still remember a lot of that. You guys know to be able to sit and, and have a voice and to be heard and not just told what to do. I think that goes a long way. So we Wait, players were that. allowed to talk to a general manager once before or no? Is that... No, I don't ever that, remember that happening. The old days you weren't. That is correct. And that's what I'm telling you. We need to change. You know, we need to be in this together. And that goes back to my communication. Um, the walls are down. We're all in the trenches together. We're going to get this done. We're going to put the work in. But there's no secrets and surprises. We're all kind of going the same direction. So, so Kev, having, uh, you know, discussion with uh, leadership group, the older players, um, do you have an idea in, in talking with Ralph, who your core is on this team moving forward? Yeah, not honestly, I, I'm not ducking the question, but we just haven't been had the time yet to really dig into the, you know, the team and, and where we are with certain players. So, you know, obviously you know, Jack is, is our captain and our, our franchise player. And that was why we wanted to make sure had a, had a brief chat, but um, that's one of the, it's on my, we talked about to-do lists. That's on my to-do list today is to, to have that conversation with Ralph and start to understand. Um, and you guys know, like, it's not about wearing a C or A. There's leaders in every part of your dressing room and um, leaders in different ways. There's leaders off the ice. There's leaders, you know, on the road that, that take the young guys out to dinner and just help them along. And that, that might not be something a fan sees, um, you know, as a captain or an assistant captain, but they're integral to the success and how you build this. So those are the questions I'm going to ask Ralph and, and make sure that I understand. Obviously, you, you know, for, for sake of search, you, you won't name names, but have you, have you thought about who you're going to replace your coaching staff with in Rochester? Is it like, has that, I mean, where does that fall in the, in the to-do list? Yeah, it's, I put a, you know, uh, certainly a list together of people that, you know, I'd like to have a conversation with, I'm sure. Um, and again, with, with the having a little bit of time, I'm sure there are a lot of people that will be reaching out. That's an, it's a sought after job um, coaching in the American hockey league in the NHL. Um, there's going to be candidates. And, and I think it's critical for us to find the right ones. And you guys, I love it's Chris Taylor. I've known him a long time. I love the work he put in. Um, this is just kind of a different direction in our philosophy around development and how we're moving forward in Rochester. Um, but Ralph's going to have a big voice in this because he needs to be the leader on the coaching side and, and making sure that the Rochester staff is absolutely dialed into what's going on in Buffalo and how we're, going to be bringing players um, from one city to the other. And in, in when we put a guy in the lineup, is he playing the same system? Is it a seamless transition? And, you know, is, is the game moves so fast. If you're thinking 
you get caught up and you're thinking about the system or you're thinking about this, you may be a half step behind. So we want to just create that synergy between the two. And obviously, Ralph is going to be a great resource and have a huge part in that process. Are you wanting younger? Are you wanting the young guys in Raj to be given those tough assignments down there? Is is that what you mean by developing? I mean putting putting guys that that need to be able to step into the NHL and contribute in that role that you just described as giving them the, those moments in in the minors as opposed to older veteran guys. Yes, I do. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe you learn through through being in in tough situations. Um, and you also learn through adversity. You, you know, you have a key face-off with five seconds to go, and if you don't take that face-off ever, then are you ready when you get that chance in the National Hockey League? Um, you know, those are critical things that we need to make sure our young players are developing. Um, you know, and I think the goal from, from Terry and Kim and through our entire organization and to Rochester is what can we do on a daily basis that helps us get closer to winning a Stanley Cup, period. So for Rochester, we need to make sure that we're putting those players in a position where they're just getting incrementally better every day. You know, and I know this will take, could take some time to make sure that we, we get that roster, but just philosophically, I think younger players being your prospects, being in positions to um, be down in Rochester getting quality minutes goes a long way. So that will be something that Ralph and I will spend a lot of time on here in the coming weeks. Thanks for your time. Uh, Riv, Razor, anything? No, I just – time will go quick, Kev. Time will go quick, so get her going. Yep, no, I appreciate it. And, I, uh, I, you know, you guys you guys know I'll come on any time. I'm always going to be uh, open and honest. And, you know, I want to be like that relationship with, with, obviously, you guys and in the media. But I also want to be that way with the fans. I want fans to understand – what we're, what we're working towards and, and why, and be um, transparent with that type of thing. That's my style anyways, but uh, so I'll be a regular on the show whenever you need me. Let me, let me ask you a, a personal question. How excited, how are the kids? <laughs> yeah, no, this is, uh, I'm glad you asked, but could get me a little choked up. You know, it's, uh, this is a, my family is such a part of this and always has been, um, you know, I mean, my oldest daughter is now a college student, and I have a daughter in high school, and, you know, my son is going into eighth grade, plays on a junior, in the Junior Saber program and lives for the Buffalo Sabres. So um, it's special, you know. This, my message to them before I jumped on the plane um, to Florida was, you know, we're, we're all in this together. You know, we're going we're gonna to be together. We're going we're gonna to learn as a family too. And, uh, but um, – Excited, excited, I guess would be the, the best word to use. Well, good stuff, Kev. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, I guess I guess this is it. You're, you're off to work. <laughs> off to work. All right, thanks, guys. I'll catch up with you soon. 